welcome back to the music genre. For this week's video, we will be talking about K-pop. And since I'm not an expert on this genre, I brought in an expert so they can talk to us about it. Please welcome Amira Joffrey in grade 10C. I started liking K-pop around early 2018, which is when I'd say BTS started getting popular like 2000, globally like 2017, 2018. And I was first attracted by their music and uh, and then when I took like a deeper dive and found, like saw their personalities and um, the, like the messages behind their music, it just brought me more into the fandom and yeah, so I've been an army for like almost three years now. I found out about BTS from my friend. She showed me the DNA MV music video when it came out and I didn't, I thought they were cool but I didn't really like, the song didn't really like uh, bring me in at that moment and she also showed me twice uh, twice liking music video uh, but I didn't get into girl groups until much later and uh, yeah. K-pop getting big so fast is part of the Hallyu wave which is uh, the wave of Korean entertainment becoming more global such as K-pop Korean movies, so Korean movies like Parasite winning the Oscars and uh, Korean drama getting popular and so Korean music is also, K-pop is also uh, becoming more global, like we're seeing in the, the fourth generation of K-pop groups, which are the new groups that are coming out. They're um, they're starting with a bigger global fan base than their local fan base in South Korea. And I think this is because of the the globalization of the world now. It's like, with a, with a click of my finger, I can see the news from somewhere across the world. K-pop is well structured, it always give, um, always there's lots of fan service, and it's a sense of community, and um, also, there's something for everyone. Like, if you like rap, you can find people who are more focused on rap. If you like pop styles, you can find ballad songs. Or if you like a more uh, dark style, you can find like dark. Or if you want cute and light and fluffy, then you can also find that. So there's basically something for everyone if you look for it. Just not like if you break the surface, there's like a whole thing. And I think people really like the diversity of K-pop in a whole. Yeah, like no group is the same. Now I know K-pop is cool and all, but what is K-pop without its loyal fans? You may not know this, but K-pop fans play a huge role in political activism for the younger generations. In June, the BTS ARMY reportedly collected and raised over $1 million for the Black Lives Matter movement, matching BTS's own donation of $1 million. They dominate viral hashtagging, and this year they were even able to interfere with tickets at Trump rallies. The Black Lives Matter movement was became more aware and some of that is due to the K-pop fans. At the end of May, the K-pop supporters flooded a police department scanner app for Dallas, Texas with, with fan cams after the police department asked citizens to submit videos of protesting activity. They spam racist, inaccurate, and ignorant hashtags with K-pop videos or, or photos. They are probably the most accurate represent representation of what cancel culture should look like. For example, when a group messes up by saying something or doing something racist, controversial, or inappropriate to their standards, they are able to cancel them very quickly. I think we could all learn something from K-pop fans. For Hello everyone and welcome to Book Recommendations with Paula. This week we have very many book recommendations from our school librarians. Our first lower school book recommendation is Cloud Tea Monkeys by Mal Pete and Elspeth Graham. The age range for this book is anyone who is older than seven. The genre is realistic fiction, and some of the topics in this book are friendship and family. Our next book recommendation is Catherine's Story by Genevieve Moore. The age range for this one is anyone who is above seven, the genre is nonfiction, and the topics discussed in this book is disability. Our next book recommendation is Tom's Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce. The age range for this one is anyone above the age of nine, the genre is fantasy fiction and adventure, and some of the topics in this book are adventures, relationships, and coming of age. Our last book recommendation for lower school students is called A Single Shard by Linda Sue Park. The age range for this one is anyone above the age of 10. The genre is historical fiction, and some of the topics in this book are perseverance and creativity. 
Our first book recommendations for middle and high school students are two books by the same author, Kwame Alexander, and they're called Booked and The Crossover. These books are sports books and they're meant for anyone in sixth grade and above. Our next book recommendation is Fish in a Tree and One for the Murphys by Linda Mullally Hunt. Uh, this book is real. Both of these books are realistic fiction, and they're meant for anyone who is in sixth grade and above. Our next book recommendation is Everything Else in the Universe by Tracy Holzer. Uh, this book is historical fiction, and again, it is meant for anyone who is above grade six. Our last book recommendation for the week is Renegades by Marissa Mayer. Uh, this is the first book in the series, and it is a fantasy fiction and science fiction book. And these books are meant for anyone who is older than thirteen. You can check out books by filling in the Google form that can be found on the Library Power School Learning. And you can send in your book recommendations to our email at goodmorningacs at gmail.com or to our Instagram, which is goodmorningacs. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Fun facts, we're going to be talking about sports. The first fact is, from 1912 to 1948, architecture was considered an Olympic sport. The second fact is that the 1956 Summer Olympics were held in two different countries. The boxing ring is called ring because it used to be round. Instead of its present form, the spectators used to stand in a circle around the fighters when the sport first became popular. In 1971, Alan Shepard and Edgar Mitchell made history when they became the first people to play sports on the moon. Shepard hit a golf ball while Mitchell threw a makeshift javelin. In France, the National Fencing Federation in 2019 recognized lightsaber fencing as an official competitive sport. Thank you for joining me for this week's look at fun facts. I hope you all stay active during the break. Bye!
<laughs> Welcome to Jokes with me, Cathalia Joffrey. What did the bald man say when he got a comb for his birthday? Thanks, I'll never part with it. <laughs> what rhymes with orange? No, it doesn't. <laughs> what does the left eye say to the right eye? Between you and me, something smells. <laughs> what do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. What do you make? What do you do to make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's all I have for you today.